Hey, hello, good morning. Welcome to those of you who just joined. This is the session on advocating for systems change. So I hope you're in the right room. My name is Emiko. I am a master's student at the University of Toronto. I'm studying social justice education and I'm specializing in environmental studies. So I'm thinking about this sort of topic around systems change every day. Um, it's pretty interesting and I hope that we can enjoy the next 40 minutes together. I believe that there are students here all the way from grade 6 to 12. So that's a big range and I hope that there is something here for everyone today. Again, if you would like to turn on your camera, if that's possible, feel free to do so. Um, if not, then we'll just get right into it. So before we start thinking about systems change, I want to talk about what individual change looks like. And when we're talking about climate change and global warming, the conversation is often focused on what we can do. And we're always asking that question, what can I do? How can I make a difference? And that's a really important question. And I think that there's tons of, tons of different examples of individual change that we always hear about. So students, I wanna hear really quickly from you, teachers, if you could just, um, put it out there to your students. What are some examples you can think of, of individual change? For example, turn off the lights when you leave a room, that's one. Teachers, if you can just pop some answers into the chat, I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, so we have turn off the tap when you're brushing your teeth, that's great. Being vegan, use a reusable water bottle, that's great. Composting, throw your garbage in the trash. Mm -hmm. Again, use a reusable water bottle. Recognize your own environmental problems. Okay, don't buy fast fashion. That's a great one. Buy local, reduce the time you spend in the shower, use less packaging, take the bus, ride a bike, use natural light. That's a great one too. Turn off the lights. Okay, amazing. These are all really great. Thank you all. Oh, that's a good one too. Create your own self-sustaining garden. I love these. So I did my own brainstorming too, and I came up with a bunch of examples. Many of you already covered these. So there's tons of individual changes that we can make to our own lifestyles. I think, uh, you know, we're, we're all quite aware of these different sorts of changes that we can make. And these are all really important, right? These are all really important things that all of us can do. But let's think a little bit deeper here. So if we're emphasizing individual change too much, that can actually become problematic. And because it can start to feel like the weight of the world is on our shoulders. It can put a huge heavy burden onto us. It can make us feel like we're responsible for climate change and we have to change all of our behaviors and we have to make sure that we're always doing the right thing. And this can cause a lot of guilt and it can cause even shame and it can make us feel bad about our actions. Um, if, if we use a plastic water bottle one day, for example, we can, feel, we can feel guilt because of that. Or maybe other people will even make us feel guilty. They'll say, oh, why are you using a plastic water bottle? That's, that's terrible. So emphasizing the role of individual change too much can, can make us feel bad. Um, it can cause these negative emotions. Um, it can put a lot of pressure on us to make sure that we're behaving in a sustainable way. But another problem here is that when we're thinking too much about individual change, that puts all of the responsibility on us and it takes away the responsibility from those who are causing the most environmental damage. So this leads to the next slide. Let's try to think a little bit bigger and a little bit deeper, okay? So who is responsible for releasing a lot of emissions on a huge scale? And who, who is really at the root of all of these problems to do with climate change. So for example, we've got corporations, governments, 
and polluting industries like oil, like gas. What do all of these things have in common? Capitalism, that's a great one. Thank you to the student school for putting that in the chat. All of these entities, oops, what do they have in common? They have a lot of money, they have a lot of power, and they have a lot of influence. All of these large systems and structures, they have the power to hurt a lot of people in a big way, right? Their decisions can impact a lot of people. And that's what makes this so difficult is that systems don't always have a face or a name. They might not even have a physical presence. In the first breakout session, one school mentioned Amazon. And I think that's a wonderful example of a corporation that's so massive, um, it feels unstoppable because it, it can affect a lot of people on this planet. Okay, and welcome to uh, everyone who has just joined us. We're talking about systems change. And right now we're talking about the sort of systems that have the power to influence and impact a lot of people in a harmful way. Okay, so I'm going to now show us a, uh, a few clips from a video. Okay, so this uh, is a great little video called, Can You Fix Climate Change? And I'm only going to show us um, a few little clips from it. A narrative of our time is that we are all responsible for rapid climate change, that everyone needs to play their part. Why don't you buy a new electric car? Why don't you replace your gas stove with an electric one? How about you double glaze your windows, stop eating meat and switch off your lights? Shifting responsibility from the largest carbon emitters to the average person, you, is much easier to do than solving problems. There's an extra Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we were talking about, right? It shifts all the responsibility onto us as individuals and takes away uh, the responsibility from those bigger systems that are causing a lot of harm. Opinion part. What can you actually do? We need a different way to think and talk about rapid climate change. An all-encompassing systemic approach, nothing less than changing the fundamentals of our modern industrial societies. As discussed in frustrating length, the personal responsibility angle is overplayed. For systemic changes in technology, politics and the economy of this magnitude, we need to influence the people at the levers. Okay, so that brings us to politicians, right? The people who are in, the po in power and who have that ability to make change for a lot of people. And just one last short clip from this video. This is the best you can do. You can deal with the reality of the situation and promote your priorities through your behavior and your actions. And while you do so, you can eat less meat, fly less or get an electric car. Not because you should feel guilty if you don't or because you naively believe that you alone can stop rapid climate change, but to do your tiny, tiny part for the systemic change we need. Okay, and I know I only showed some tiny parts of that video. It's a great video, but I love the way that it, it's emphasizing that these individual changes that we can make, they're all really important, right? They're really important things that all of us can do on a daily basis, but we, we can't stop there. And I really like this quote. We need to broaden our definition of personal action beyond what we buy or use. Start by changing your light bulb, but don't stop there. Um, and yes, I can share the link to that video. So this leads us to our first activity around dreaming for a better world. And hopefully you all uh, were told to prepare some paper and a pen or a pencil. Um, we're going to take a, a break from the screens for a few minutes here. And so the prompt for this activity is, let's envision a sustainable, healthy world. What would this look like to you? And it's going to look different for everyone. 
So I've written some, some questions down at the bottom to get you thinking about this. So for example, in this, in this dream world of yours, how do people get around? How do people interact with others and with the environment? What do our cities look like? And what kind of food do we eat? So uh, I'm not sure if any, any of you have heard about this stream of consciousness type writing style. So with the stream of consciousness, you're basically just going to try and write and write and write as much as you can. Get these thoughts from your head onto the paper. You don't have to care about proper spelling or proper grammar. Just throw that all out of the window. This is only for you to get thinking and to get writing. And no one else is going to see what you've written. This is only for yourself. If you hate writing, please feel free to draw. That's totally fine, okay? So I'm going to give you just around four to five, I'll say four minutes, okay? So this is dreaming for a better world. Try to get down as much as you can. Don't worry about it being perfect, okay? I'm gonna play some nice soothing music in the background and uh, let's get started. Okay, so unfortunately we need to stop it there. Um, I would have loved to give you a lot more time for that activity, but uh, unfortunately we uh, need to make time for the rest of the, the session. So I hope that that was a useful activity for you. Um, and maybe if you don't enjoy writing or drawing, at least the music I hope was relaxing. <laughs> um, so the question to ask ourselves is, this world that I just wrote about or drew about, is this the world that we are in right now? And the answer is probably no. So that leads us to how can we try to create that world that we want to see? And one way that we can do this is by advocating for systems change. So I've come up with a whole list of things that we can do to help create systems change. And all of these, all of these different tactics require different skills. So maybe you feel like you are a really strong writer and you want to write some, some letters to, to the people in power. Maybe you wanna just sign a petition and share it. That's a small action that you can take really quickly, uh, which adds up if a lot of people sign this position, uh, petition. Maybe you're really into hosting um, social events and you wanna have a movie night about climate change, or you wanna just um, attend a rally or a march, right? That's kind of related to joining an existing movement. You don't have to start your own. You can join one that's already been planned. Maybe you're uh, really good at drawing or painting and you wanna create some climate related art and display it publicly. Um, and one of the, uh, the, ways, the ways that we can advocate for systems change that I want to focus on is banking on a better future. So for, for those of you who, uh, who don't know, the top five biggest banks in Canada actually spend, they give a lot of money to fossil fuel companies. So they are funding climate change pretty much. They give tons and tons and tons of money to, to the fossil fuel industry. And that's not good. So this Banking on a Better Future organization was created um, to try to get people to take their money away from those big banks. And I know that some of you, maybe you don't have your own bank account yet, but that's where this youth pledge comes in. And I've highlighted, oops, highlighted here, if you don't have your own bank account, contact your local bank branch managers and let them know that you intend to open your first account with an alternative institution. This is actually something that I did. I emailed my bank last year and I told them, um, I don't support the way that this bank is funding climate change. Okay, that's something that all of us can do whether we have an account or not. So I hope that this would be something that um, some of you might look into later on. But we need to move right ahead to our, our final activity. 
So we've talked about systems change and, and ways that we can try to start advocating for that, but it can be overwhelming and scary and we can feel like it's just too big of a problem for us to handle. Individual change, yeah, we can turn off the lights. We can, we can use a reusable water bottle. Uh, we can walk to school maybe, but um, some of these bigger changes might be a little bit harder. So I want to hear from all of you. And what I've done is I have put together a Jamboard. So I'm going to put that into the chat just a moment. And uh, each school, ha you have your own slide. <laughs> the name is up at the top left. So I want you to, to talk all together, come up with uh, your concerns. What's stopping you from taking these bigger actions? And then come up with your response. So for example, I'm just one person. I can't affect huge systems. That's my concern. And my response is, well, if I work with my friends and my classmates, we can have an impact together. Okay. So come up with as many concerns as you can, as many responses as you can. Um, if you're a student joining individually, um, hopefully you'll be able to find your school and you can just put in these concerns yourself. If for some reason you don't uh, see your school, feel free to make a new slide and just write your things in there, okay? So teachers, feel free to, to organize your students and, and do this however you want, but uh, time is ticking, so let's get started. If you have questions, just put them in the chat for me. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut us short there. I know that that wasn't a, uh, a lot of time, but I see that most of you have gotten down some really great um, concerns and responses. And uh, I would really encourage teachers, uh, if you have time, if you can maybe expand upon, upon this thinking and take a little bit more time to think about um, responses to these concerns, because these concerns are really important. These are the things that, um, that our, our students and all of us are worried about, and that might be preventing us from trying to make bigger, bigger changes. Um, and I wanted to just point out a few, a few uh, of the concerns that were mentioned here. Um, one of them says the concern, I don't have enough money to buy plant-based or organic products. Um, and that's where this problem of putting the pressure on individuals comes in because we feel bad if we can't buy organic food. Um, but not everyone has the money or the privilege to be able to, to do that, right? And we shouldn't feel bad if if we don't have that money and if we're not able to buy organic, for example. So moving our thinking from individual behavior to systems change helps us to feel less guilty about those, those personal changes that we are told we have to make, okay? Um, I love this other one, the concern. I've already bought from big companies. Um, and the response, well, you can you can always change, and that's very true. You can start changing um, today, right? That's totally that's totally good. Um, another concern: political figures make empty promises, um, or the people in, in power uh, aren't aren't really able to make changes, um, and that's a very legit concern. Um, and I like this response. We can begin by informing ourselves, uh, learn about these issues that are occurring, talk about them, and then take action, spread that awareness. Maybe these political leaders aren't doing anything about climate change because no one is telling them that this is an important issue. But maybe if enough people come together and are pushing for that and pushing and pushing, the leaders will realize, OK, this is actually an important issue. Um, and when you're old enough, voting, voting is one of the best ways that we can, we can take this action and try to seek systems change. Because if we vote for people who care about the climate, that can have a huge impact. 
So thank you all so much for, for your contributions on this Jamboard. And as I said, if you didn't really have enough time to get into it, um, I really hope that you can maybe take a little bit more class time to do it later. And I'm um, just going to share, end off here. So just a final quote by David Suzuki. In a world of more than 7 billion people, each of us is a drop in the bucket. But with enough drops, we can fill any bucket. And I love that so much. And it's an important thing to remember. Um, I did put the link to that video in the chat. I also put the link to Banking on a Better Future. That's the youth pledge. I encourage you all to check it out. Um, and we are out of time, so we're going to end it there. Um, I really hope that this was a useful session for you. I can't uh, see your faces, so <laughs> I don't know um, if you enjoyed it or, or anything, but um, I really hope that, that you learned something, and I hope you can keep thinking about um, not only what you can do in your everyday life, but how you can try to have a, a bigger impact, right? Um, so thank you. Thank you so much and uh, hope you go back to the main room for the, the end of the summit. Okay, bye everyone. Thank you so much.